CARICOM Secretary General designate Dr. Carla Barnett tells CARICOM News Time how she sees the region emerging out of the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. And CARICOM and Portugal forge closer relations. Welcome to this week's episode of the CARICOM News Time. I'm Toussaint in English Francis. Thank you for tuning in. CARICOM Secretary General designate Dr. Carla Barnett contemplates the work ahead in leading the Secretariat. She sat down with the CARICOM News Time and shared her thoughts on a number of issues, including how the region can emerge from the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. One of the things she acknowledges very early is that it is not something she can do alone. It is not something that I alone would be able to work at. It is about myself and my team and member states and, and everybody in the community that will have to continue to cooperate, collaborate, keep focus on the medium to long term, which is to get our economies to rebound, our societies to stabilize, our tourism and agricultural sectors to, to return to the levels of, of activity and productivity that we know we are capable of. The Secretary General designate acknowledged that she is about to lead the Secretariat at a time when the community is facing a confluence of crises. In this context, she said it is important for there to be a smooth transition within the Secretariat. Key to CARICOM's emergence out of the COVID-19 pandemic, she believes, is keeping our economies alive and keeping people alive. We have to deal with the immediacy of the crisis because people have lost their jobs and their income and livelihoods and therefore it's a matter of survival for a, a larger group of people than normally would be faced with that. That's the immediate issue and for most of us that has meant that we have had to borrow additional funds. Um, that's not unique to Belize, it's happened across the region because Revenues fell. The money that governments would normally have for emergency um, responses fell. And therefore, borrowing, repurposing loan, calling down on additional credit, all of that became the immediate response, um, which was important and which continues to be important because the economies have not begun to, to reach that level of, of growth that would allow many more people to become employed again. Dr. Barnett believes that once the region gets COVID-19 under control, in the long to medium term, economic activity will rebound. Increased productivity in the agriculture sector and establishing and implementing protocols for traveler safety in tourism are going to be key, she believes. And in CARICOM, we've been talking about agriculture policy, about countries that can provide food to other countries. We have to now place those considerations, I believe, in the context of regional food security. For our tourism, we now have to understand that traveling safely is a big issue. So we have to bring COVID under control. We have to be seen to be bringing COVID under control and we have to be responsive to the external markets because our tourists come from the US, they come from Europe, they come from Canada. And those markets have their own issues. We have to be responsive to what they um, expect to be able to, to find when they're crossing our borders. They have to be able to believe, to feel that they're coming into countries where we are observing the, the new protocols for, for delivery of service, all of that. So it's a, it's a new world that we're in. Um, and, and we have to understand that we have to do things differently. We, it, it's not as if when COVID goes, we return to normal. There is going to be a new normal, a new way of working, a new way of coexisting. All of that will have changed. And, and so all of that we have to bring into our planning and our execution. The Caribbean community and Portugal have forged closer relations with the appointment and accreditation of a new envoy of the European country to CARICOM. On Wednesday, May 19th, CARICOM Secretary General Ambassador Erwin LaRocque accepted the letters of credence of His Excellency Carlos Amaro, new plenipotentiary representative of Portugal to CARICOM. 
With the relationship renewed, Secretary General Larocque is hopeful for Portugal's support on issues of concern to CARICOM. These include climate change, equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines, a review of the criterion for accessing concessional development finances, and a review of the EU's consultative mechanism on tax compliance and governance. We would welcome the support of Portugal in using its important voice in the national community and particularly as the current president of the European Council towards the development of a universal vulnerability index. This would be a fairer criterion than that of GDP per capita. It is also hoped that Portugal will use its leadership position to promote dialogue between the EU and CARICOM regarding the issue of the unjust and unfair blacklisting of some of our member states. This unwarranted listing comes despite the fact that our countries have taken huge strides to ensure they meet standards certified by the relevant global authorities. Support for a meaningful dialogue in addressing this issue is critical, given that blacklisting has caused severe reputational damage to those member states. It results, among other things, in adversely affecting correspondent banking relationships. In reaffirming Portugal's commitment to deepen relations with CARICOM, the new envoy said his country would continue working within the framework of EU-CARICOM relations and in multilateral fora. During its presidency of the Council of the EU, he said Portugal's focus would be on signature and provisional application of the post cotonou Agreement. Portugal is a strong supporter of the economic partnership agreement between the EU and ACP countries, whose merits in terms of fostering close relations between the parties and then increased regional integration, we very much praise. The Portuguese presidency will focus on the discussion of the Council's decision to authorize the signature and provisional application of the post cotonou Agreement which we believe to be comprehensive, ambitious, and a modern instrument, and a turning point compared to previous agreements. I accepted the COVID-19 vaccine. Initially, I felt fine, but later that evening, I had a headache. The next morning, I woke up with fever, chills, body pains, and I was just really, really tired. The symptoms continued. And that evening, I was out by 6 p.m. The good news, the second day after my vaccine, I got up feeling great. No more side effects. I am truly happy that I took the COVID-19 vaccine. The Caribbean community now has a cohort of early childhood educators with new skills to conduct online training of children between the ages of three to eight years old. A recently concluded workshop trained 40 early childhood practitioners from across the community in delivering quality education at a distance. It was organized and implemented through a collaboration involving the CARICOM Secretariat, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, and the Caribbean Child Development Center of the University of the West Indies Open Campus. Speaking at the closing ceremony, Program Manager for Human Resource Development at the CARICOM Secretariat, Dr. Lord Bristol, commended the collaboration that provided certification of the skills the participants obtained. Uh, one of the things that I really appreciate about the relationship with UNESCO is that they're in this experience focus on really providing opportunities that are relevant and in time to the needs of the community that they're serving here in the Caribbean. Thank you to Cecile, your team, Catherine and Nicole and your institution of UWE Open Campus for really putting service to the region first. We could not have done this. The expertise resides there and we could not have done this without you. Main facilitator of the workshop, consultant and former early childhood coordinator of the UWI Open Campus, Miss Catherine O'Sullivan, told the participants it was a pleasure for her to spend four weeks of training with them. Um, just want to say congratulations at the end of these workshops. Um, thank you for attending them or catching the recordings, doing the assignments, sharing your thoughts with us, sharing your, I mean, basically your whole world with us. 
Um, and I definitely can say that I've learned more from you than you have from me. So it's just been a wonderful time. Head of the Caribbean Child Development Center and Director of the Consortium for Social Development and Research at the University of the West Indies Open Campus in Jamaica, Ms. Sissi Unanot, also congratulated the cohort of early childhood practitioners for successfully completing the training program. We are here to congratulate you all for successfully completing the workshop. And I'm so proud of all of you because you stood it, you stood it through and you were there for the time. So we're quite excited. Yes, I do hope that you are all able to learn some new skills that you have been either using now or you intend to use soon and will be sharing with your colleagues. So the University of the West Indies Open Campus takes great pride in the work that we do and our ability to be able to assist you and help everyone in here with new skills, or if it weren't new skills, in enhancing the skill set that you presently have. National Program Officer for Education in UNESCO Cluster Office for the Caribbean, Ms. Latoya Swabby Anderson, in her remarks said early childhood education is the best investment a country can make to promote human resource development, gender equality, social cohesion, and to reduce the cost for later remedial programs at the primary and secondary levels. This is even especially true for vulnerable children, as the role that um, early childhood development plays in compensating sometimes for the disadvantages and the challenges that occur at the family level and combating the educational and social inequalities. So we are standing with you and we assert that ECD must not only be considered as an educational issue, nor put on the sidelines of discussions and strategies for economic recovery, but should also be a part of the discussions in the multilateral fora as a strategic investment for societies. For more stories, you can visit the CARICOM news site at today.caricom.org or the CARICOM website at caricom.org. Like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Be safe and see you next time.